What's going on YouTube? Back from another video. I'm going to read an excerpt from this book called Fake by Robert Kiyosaki. I couldn't put this book down. I'm about to finish it in a couple days. Um, it's like about 400 pages. I'm reading about 100 pages per day. So four days for me. I want to finish this ASAP. But I'm going to read an excerpt from this because I want you to feel what, I'm, what I've been saying in the last couple videos about the corruption in our country. So I'm going to talk about the printing of fake money and why it's so dangerous and have data to back it up. So printing fake money, history repeats itself. Printing fake money is not new. The ancient and modern banking systems are built on printing fake money. Printing fake money is the way banks make money. The reason banks make so much money is because for thousands of years, the banking system has had a license to print money. Banks are not the only organization with the license to print money. The stock market, bond market, real estate market, financial derivative market, and many other markets have licenses to print money. Counterfeiters print real fake money. You can print money too, legally, and you don't need a license to print money, a license to print. Well, a license, that's what he says, a license. Listen, people who work for money work for people who print money. Damn, I'm getting hockey. The problem with education, a bigger problem is that our education system does not educate students about printing money. Instead, the education system teaches students to work for people who print money. This is what's really behind the financial crisis we face today. August 15, 1971 was the start of the biggest money printing expedition in world history. On that date, President Richard Nixon announced the U.S. dollar could no longer be traded for gold at a fixed rate. Wow. In 1972, the year I flew behind enemy lines looking for gold, I did not know what I was doing or why I was doing what I was doing. I was just curious, wondering what Rich Dad meant when he said, quote, watch out, the world is going to change, end quote. Looking back, I realized I was inadvertently witnessing the start of the greatest financial ripoff in world history. Centuries of printing money. Just as a reminder, money printing is not new. Most money printing ventures have been tiny, isolated, regional, and limited to small countries. A, f a few cash heists have been monsters, world game changers. A few giants have been one. The Chinese were the first to print money in AD 618. Marco Polo noticed Chinese paper money on his travels and the practice of printing paper money slowly spread to Europe. Oh, a big one. I told y'all, to the Roman Empire. Faced with rising debts, fighting long distance wars, diluted their gold and silver coins with base metals such as nickel and tin. American colonialists, that's, that's number three. American colonialists printed fake money to fight the Revolutionary War, as did the South, printing the Confederate dollar to fight the Civil War. Number four, very dangerous. Germany printed trillions in fake money in the 1920s. Printing fake money led to World War II, the rise of, I ain't gonna say his name, guy with a square mustache, and the slaughter of millions of Jews and others innocent. Number five, Zimbabwe, once the breadbasket of Africa, became the basket case of Africa after the leader began printing money in the 2000s. Number six, Venezuela is one of the richest oil countries. It, Venezuela is one of the, the richest oil countries in the world. In 2018, Venezuela is on the verge of bankruptcy and revolution, and, and revolution, yet continues to print fake money. <clears throat> Lesson, in nearly every example, the rich got richer and everyone else lost. Lesson, the printing of fake money has never ended gracefully. Lesson, the promise. In 1944, the U.S. dollar was made the reserve currency of the world at a conference of 44 nations in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. That year, the U.S., uh, through the Bretton Woods Agreement, promised the world to back its dollar with gold. With that promise, the U.S. dollar became the first global reserve, global money. The stage was set for the mother of all money printing, a global cash heist. Lesson, trading with the enemy. In the 1950s, former enemies, Germany and Japan, began selling Volkswagen and Toyotas in the U.S. The more the U.S. imported, the more gold left the country. Lesson, 
broken promise. In 1971, the U.S. broke its 1944 promise. The reason Richard Nixon broke the promise was to stop gold from leaving the U.S. History has proven that Nixon was a liar. Hence, his nickname, <laughs> Tricky Dick. <laughs> He also lied about why he broke his promise. If Nixon had kept the dollar on the gold standard, the gold standard would have solved the problem of gold leaving America. The U.S. would have been um, punished for importing more than it was exporting. America would have, ha would have had to start producing better products at a better price, a.k.a. capitalism. <laughs> and gold would have flowed back to America. Instead, the academic elite killed capitalism. Factories were forced to close and jobs left America for lower wage countries. The gold standard was broken so that the academic elite could print money, making themselves richer by ripping off the world. In Buck Fuller's words, grunge, gross universal cash heist. Lesson, the dollar becomes debt. In 1971, the dollar morphed into an IOU from the American taxpayers. The U.S. Became, began paying for Volkswagens and Toyotas with IOUs. Lesson, Nixon promised taking the dollar off the gold standard was temporary. Lesson, Nixon resigned before being impeached for, for the Watergate scandal. He did not keep his promise to put the, the, the U.S. Uh, dollar back on the gold standard. The biggest money printing operation in world history was underway and is still operating today. The rich are getting extremely rich and the poor and middle class are in trouble. As Steve Brill writes, Lately, most Americans, regardless of their political leanings, have been asking themselves some version of the same question. How did we get here? How did the world's greatest democracy and economy become a land of crumbling roads, galloping income and inequality, um, bitter, polariza bitter polarization, and dysfunctional government? As I tried to find the answer over the past two years, I discovered a recurring irony. About five decades ago, the core values that make, that, that make America great begin to bring America down. Wow. <sighs> Dr. Fuller warned our class of this, paraphrasing from the three times I studied with him. He said the old money rich began operating the doors to elite higher education, to extremely bright students from the middle class and poor in the 1960s and 1970s. These elite baby boomers, baby boomer students became the puppets of the puppeteers who are grunge. Brill is one of the extremely brill, um, bright middle class students of the 1960s who was among the chosen. Others are President Barack Obama, William Clinton, um, Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Fed Chairman, oh, Ben Bernanke, oh, Chairman Jenny Yellen. So he's basically saying the elites that were uh, getting, I won't say groomed, but getting prepared to run the world. You know, these are people who understood what was going on back in the 60s and 70s, and this is why they're able to, you know, get ahead. You know what I'm saying? At the cost of all of us. You know, people don't even know this stuff. It's sad that Americans don't even know this. Buck Fuller was from the old boy, American white um, aristocrat with inherited wealth. He was fourth generation at Milton Academy and fourth generation Harvard. Fuller never graduated from Harvard. President John F. Kennedy, George H.W. Bush, George W. Bush, and Senator Mitt Romney, all graduated, all graduates of Harvard and Yale, are from the American white aristocrats inherited wealth. <clears throat> and you know, he goes on and on about global money printing and all this stuff. But if you want to read this book, I recommend you read this book. Just want to give you a little excerpt. I've been reading this like crazy in the last couple of days. And it's just really exposing um, the corruption in our country right now and globally. I want you to go read this book, folks. It cost me 20 bucks. 20 bucks to get some answers. Ask my grandparents about what happened in 1971. No, nobody knows. You know? Um, and we're now paying the price of not being responsible and knowing the truth. So that's why I come out and I tell you guys about this stuff because at the end of the day, we're going to look up 10 years from now. More debt. <laughs> and wondering why. Unless you have this book right here and you're educating yourself, you're probably like, what the fuck is going on right now? You didn't know about this. You didn't know what was going on in 1971. <laughs> and before then, and the dollar actually being, and not only that, I want to, I want to make y'all very uncomfortable right now. Gold was banned here in America. After the Great Depression happened, there's capital controls. 1933, gold was banned here. 
till about 74. So gold, the real money, the real sound money was been here for 40, just about 40 years. How insecure are you to where the real money is banned? You say, use my money, US dollars as legal tender. Gold doesn't have that. Gold comes with voluntarism. You know, so I voluntarily trade this piece of paper for gold. That's a real money, folks. US dollar comes with coercion. You know what I'm saying? Comes with lies, comes with debasement, comes with time theft. Why sit there and deal with that? Don't get played by these people, folks. You guys aren't dumbasses, okay? You're smart. You're better than this, Americans. Not just Americans, guys, this is a global game. <laughs> We're talking about Europeans, people in Argentina right now, 100% inflation. Canadians right there. You know what I'm saying? We're all dealing with the same problem, folks. Don't get played by these parasites. It don't have to be this way. So I, I, I will end the video right here, folks. Please, folks, buy this book and read it. It will answer all your questions. Some of y'all right out here working for the US dollar. Okay, not even knowing how this shit works. Please, become educated. So I'll see y'all in my next video. Peace, folks.